there, so welcome everybody. Today I would like to talk about the hot red press cut filter technique and I would like to motivate this technique by looking at one uh, very specific example. So at some point in time, it was in 2013, I was running into this article of the Wall Street Journal and here the journalist says like breaking news, high unemployment uh, in Europe is due to a recession. And I asked myself, hey, hmm, isn't that obvious? Like, for example, here, like we have the unemployment rate in Spain, like the unemployment rate in Spain increased from a level of about 10% to the level of 25%. So for me, it was obvious um, that uh, the unemployment uh, rate is so high because of the fact that there is a recession in Europe. Uh, when I thought about it, uh, I thought, yeah, like unemployment rate, this is one measure. But we also have to think about the natural rate of unemployment. So how large is the unemployment rate? How large is the natural rate of unemployment? And how large is the so-called unemployment gap? In case that the natural rate of unemployment is according to like the orange line here, it is the case that the difference between the actual unemployment rate and the natural rate is relatively low. So that also the unemployment gap, like the difference between these two measures is relatively small. However, in case that we measure the natural rate of unemployment as a straight line, as a trend line, then uh, it is obvious that the unemployment gap in the year 2013 is relatively huge. Why is that important? Like in case that there is no unemployment gap at all, uh, the Spanish government should not be allowed to perform an, an expansionary fiscal policy. So the Spanish government should not be allowed to perform a counter-cyclical macroeconomic policy because like there is no recession at all because there is no unemployment gap. However, when the unemployment gap is huge, then uh, it should be obvious that the Spanish government should be allowed to perform an, uh, an anti-cyclical macroeconomic policy uh, to increase government spending, for example, or to decrease taxes. So today I would like to introduce the Hodrick Prescott filter. We can use the Hodrick Prescott filter in order to compute like the natural rate of unemployment. And uh, when we have found this measure, we can also easily compute like the unemployment gap. Let's have a look. So in the first step, uh, we have to take the natural log of the observed unemployment rate. And then we assume that um, this variable consists out of a trend component tau and a cyclical component ct. So we can disentangle uh, the overall time series in two components, a trend component and a cyclical component. In this example, the UT denotes, of course, the log unemployment rate and the trend component tau represents the log of the natural rate of unemployment. And the difference between the realized unemployment and the natural rate of unemployment, this is like the unemployment gap, like the variable C is the unemployment gap. When it comes to the HP filter, uh, it is a case that we have to search for a trend component tau, which minimizes the following expression. Uh, there is a very long expression here to some sign, a lot of indices. So this looks very complicated, but uh, let's try to disentangle like two components. The first component is a component in red ink. The first component will take a relatively small value only if the trend component tau is relatively close to the actual time series of the log unemployment rate. When we go back to the uh, two figures which I created, it will be the case that the first uh, component of the loss function will be relatively small in this scenario here. 
And in this scenario, the first component of the loss function will take larger values. The second component can be interpreted as a change of the change of the trend component. The parameter tau represents a weighting factor and indicates which weight should be given to the second component in relation to the first component. So if you want to, the first component receives like the weight of one and the second component receives the weight of lambda. Lambda is also called the smoothing parameter because lambda is important how smooth like the orange line will be, whether it will be a straight line or whether it will show a higher degree of volatility. The second component would exhibit a very low value in case that the change in the trend component is relatively small. In an extreme scenario, the second component could even take the value of zero when the change in tau is constant over time. This could be the case when tau changes by a constant value, say uh, 2% every quarter. I would like to illustrate that uh, by looking at one uh, very specific example. So let's assume that the variable tau takes the following values. In period one, it is a case that tau is equal to two. In period two, tau is equal to two of two. And in period three, uh, tau is equal to 2.04. In this case, the second component of, of the objective function equals zero. Let's have a look. So when we plug in, uh, tau 3 minus tau 2, the difference is 0 0.02. And when we uh, type in uh, 202 for tau 2 and uh, 2 for tau 1, then also this term in brackets is equal to 0 0.02. And hence the term in square bracket is equal to 0. And the whole element here will be equal to to zero. So in case that tau changes by a constant factor, then the second part of the loss function will take the value of zero. So the first component would take small values in case that tau is adjusted relatively strongly towards uh, the actual time series. So the trend component has to change frequently. However, like frequent changes of tau lead to a higher penalty via the second component of the objective function. So the objective function contains a kind of trade-off uh, in case that uh, tau is relatively close to the actual time series of the unemployment rate then it is the case that the first component is relatively small, but the second component is relatively large because of the fact that tau changes frequently. Uh, this is the theoretical part uh, of uh, this lecture, and uh, I'll make a break here. Uh, uh, an empirical part will follow soon. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.